So I just like to get a little bit creative once in a while and try to make something out of nothing. Uh, so anyway, I've got the, the Dayton uh, 8 ohm exciters. Well, anyway, they're pretty cool looking, and I guess essentially it's like a it's like a speaker um, that doesn't have a cone. Basically, stick them on anything, and they make noise, right? Okay, what can I craft this together with, right? <laughs> what do I have around the house? <laughs> and uh, not only that, but what is it that maybe if somebody that sees this video and they want to build a pair, right? Like, okay, so where do you get this stuff at? Well. You know, so Parts Express or Amazon for the for the exciters. Um, the other things I'm using, uh, a tape measure. Uh, I'm sure you probably have one of those. If not, you can get one pretty much anywhere. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? A uh, pair of scissors. Uh, I'm assuming you might have some laying around the house. Uh, oh, some kind of knife, razor knife, what have you. Uh, a couple of Sharpies or pens, whatever you got. Um, I've got, uh, let's see, I've got one of these. Now this is kind of a special thing. You're, you're gonna have to go out of your way to try to find this, but it's a wall plate. You can find these things anywhere, Amazon, Home Depot. I mean, you know, it's basically just for, uh, you know, running wires in your house for home theater, which is what I have these laying around for. Uh, Gorilla Glue. Of course, got to have Gorilla Glue. Um, some wire, uh, preferably really nice wire, high-end wire. Um, and now I'm going to need something to stick the exciters on. So I thought, well, you know, I'm not using these uh, precision forks that I bought from, uh, from Parts Express. And they were fairly inexpensive. So it's something that if this works, if this box works, which so far, and this is my ultimate de uh, design criteria for these, is that it's got the right shape, that it looks like a speaker. Because to be honest with you, that's the only thing that turns me off about the flat panel speakers with the exciters. You know, they don't look like speakers, right? <laughs> I mean, so it's cool that they make sound. I don't know, they might be the world's greatest speakers. I'm not sure. I wouldn't even mind trying to make a home theater out of them or something, you know. Uh, but nonetheless, they don't look anything like speakers. And speaker builders, man, us audio people, we want to see a speaker. So I had to find a box that kind of looks like a speaker. Plan is I'm going to use the precision port boxes maybe some of the components all right so we got that next tape now not all of you are going to have this super fancy office style dispenser with the sand bottom that keeps it from moving around right. and the rubber tape uh we've got our workbench uh tv tray right <laughs> most people will have similar to work you know i want to make these things look nice too so i want to put that nice finishing touch on them so i do have some wrapping paper Thanks for joining me, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. World's best mini monitors for under 20 bucks. And I'm going to do frequency tests to prove it. I'll let you, I'll even do a listening test. You'll see. They're going to sound fantastic. All right, let's get serious about this. And right now, what's going through my head is I want to try to figure out a way to use what comes in the precision port box because that would be cool if you could order these boxes order these ports come in these boxes and make a speaker out of them that might be kind of cool okay so let's see so if we were to use this as a base for this speaker. That's easy enough. I can draw a hole, cut a hole right in the bottom, stick that through, and then we would wind up with our seven inch long port here. Okay, and there's still, I think, room for the exciter in there too. 
it joins with it, you know, really easily. Like, literally, it just, like so. Just, it's like a press fit. I would glue it. Now, with this here, we could get super fancy, actually. Super fancy. Um, so this has kind of a flange on it with little, uh, kind of molded in center punches or locations to drill mounting holes. Well, but what I was thinking is, I might be able to use those as like where little feet go to hold it up off of a surface so that it could still let base out. Kind of like, um, uh, like a subwoofer does, like this subwoofer over here. Sounds like a plan. It's a start, right? And then I also need to figure out where I'm going to put my exciter. I want to make sure that it all fits in there without hitting, without vibrating. You can't have any of that in this kind of a critical high-tech, super expensive science project. Kids, don't try this at home. So while I've got this uh, thing going together, I just figured I'd kind of stop and pause for a minute. And I'm about to close this guy up and see what it kind of looks like as a speaker. What do you think, huh? Pretty awesome. Yeah, super cool. All right, now. Will the exciter fit inside, I wonder? Oh, let's see. Since I centered this on the bottom, I'll be able to actually visualize it in here if I put it on the back panel. And so it actually hits this, which I don't think that that's a good thing. I don't think that's the way it's designed to work. So where can I put it where it doesn't hit it? I could probably put it off to the side, something like that. And that might work. If I remember right, I think that uh, the video that shows the guy making the world's greatest speakers um, with these exciters, I think that um, he uses some kind of rule of like, I don't know, putting it kind of like not all the way over, not all the way in the center, but kind of like offset a little bit. He's got some kind of calculation measurement he uses. Actually, I like that channel. He's a smart guy. And I, I actually kind of 
I wouldn't doubt if those speakers sound good. Um, when I watch that video, I'd like to be in the room and listen to them. If you're ever using a glue gun, you got to make sure to you use your industrial extension cord. Here's what I've got going on right now. So I did the mock-up on my little speaker. Have a very rough idea of where I'm going with it. Okay, something like so. All right. Okay. Now, somehow I'm going to stand this off so it lets base out. Haven't figured that out yet. Inside, this is what we got going on. And I'm gonna have to attach this. Now this is gonna be our base. Not base like boom boom boom, base like holds it up. So anyway, I want it to be as stiff as possible. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna use Gorilla Glue. Yeah, what could we use? as standoffs for that. Hmm, let me think. So I was walking around the house trying to figure out what can I find that'll work to hold this up and still look decent and do the job. Um, bottle caps or, you know, the little rubber stick-on feet that come with, you know, furniture or whatever it is you might find laying around your house. I think anything to get it up off of here would be fine. Um, I had found some uh, woofer screws, you know, I thought, well, you know, I could probably do those, something like that. That's a possibility. But for me, I kind of lucked out and I actually had these, um, I don't even know what they came from. I think some speaker stands I bought or something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's a perfect number of them. So I'm going to use these and they have some weight to them as well, which will kind of help support that whole thing. So I'm getting super fancy here. Nope, I'm not going to bywire it. What I plan on doing is just 
cutting this in half and then mounting these back in there and they'll basically stick out you know the back of the back of the uh, box there so that's the plan let's see how successful I am at that oh boy Okay, got a plan. Love it when a plan comes together. So that's the plan right there. That's gonna be my, my binding post plate. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get this one cut up like that and get it fastened down in here. I think I'll probably just use hot glue for that. All right, so here's what I'm thinking is Here's my exciter, and I think what I'm going to do actually is mount it on the front panel, kind of like over here. And the reason is, is because I, I know that I've got to clear my base reflex port. So when I put that in there, if this is on here, right, it'll clear here. When I close this guy, that'll be about here. And that's where I was headed with this anyway, is that I need wire to go from my terminal plate, which is gonna be here. Ooh, that's gonna be in the way of the, that's gonna be in the way, isn't it? I wonder if it'll be in the way on this side. Uh, less in the way. Yeah, that's for for sure. Less in the way. Boy, I didn't think that through, did I? This is kind of nice because it's already got little spring-loaded terminals on there and it's already equipped with the tape already on there. If you're going to reuse this, you have to, you know, get some new tape or glue it on or something.
what I want to do is I want to get this little exciter on here. And if you want to take a good look at this, it's pretty cool actually. It's, it's actually heavier than it looks. And this is like a suspension here. So it is just like a speaker, okay? Yeah, it's pretty neat. Dayton Audio, okay. All right, so I'm done with my new speakers, and you are going to be amazed. I haven't turned them on yet, so I have no clue what they're going to sound like. I have no idea what to expect from these at all. And yeah, let's uh, let's see what all the let's see what all the hype is about. Okay, all right. So you're experiencing this with me for the first time. We're all queued up, and let's go ahead and we'll turn this way down. And I'm going to come behind you there and turn up the volume a little bit at a time until you see what's going on. I'll probably fire up the, uh, the frequency graph too so that you can see kind of like what maybe these are capable of. Um, so anyway, let's check them out. I'm excited. Here goes nothing, folks. Hope these things don't catch on fire. They're made out of cardboard. It did say put them on anything, though. Here we go. I'm 
turning it up. It's at negative 80, negative 70. I still don't hear anything. Negative 63. No, I'm not hearing nothing. Oh, I think I hear something. You guys hear that? Huh. Okay. Well, all right. Let's see. Let's see what they sound like. I hope. I hope you guys got your headphones on. These are going to be amazing. Hmm. So far, so good. It's at negative thirty-five dB. They're definitely making noise. Now that we can hear them, let's go ahead and reset that. Turn them up a little bit. Not bad. They really do get loud. I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. <laughs> You know I'm joking, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got these the big ones running. <laughs> Let me hook these little guys up for real, okay? Before I even fire these up, I want to show you all the technical prowess that went into these. So, this is uh, kind of what it looks like. And your mileage may vary. Um, this is on there loose. You know, it's probably going to, if it does make noise, this paper is probably going to rattle a little bit. I, maybe I'll take it off and glue it on there if these things actually work. Um, this is my stand that I made. There's the base reflex port. And this should be tuned to roughly 100 hertz. I did put little, uh, little like, gasket speaker gasket material so that it doesn't vibrate against this other speaker. But yeah, pretty impressive, huh? Dun, dun, dun. Don't touch that one. Okay, so now for real, this is playing. These are hooked up, and this is completely at zero muted. All right, let's see what happens, folks. Negative 70. Oh, I hear them. That's crazy. They're actually working. Oh, is that crazy? That's, that's funny. Pretty cool. Here, you want to hear them before I blow them up?
play this uh, funny disc called Kurt's Mix. It was, it's, boy, oh boy, this thing is 20, 20 years old or so. Maybe not quite that much. I don't know. My son made it when he was in high school. All right, DVD, CD. We are going digital, folks. Let's go minus 20. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. So these things, they actually work. They make sound. And this was like totally just, I didn't have a plan at all, man. I literally stick them on anything, right? But yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I feel this thing vibrating.
you know, whiz banging them together and not having a plan. Um, I'm really surprised, <laughs> really surprised. I'm sure if you were like the dude with the uh, world's greatest speakers, uh, and you did that kind of research and took your time really, you know, figuring it out, I think that you could probably make a decent pair of uh, speakers out of it. Yeah. Cool. What's the next one? Oh, Vogue. This one's got a lot of bass. Let's see what happens. And then we could fire up the subwoofer too. This is just a negative 20 dB. doesn't sound all that horrible um still sounds kind of transistor radio-ish but i think with some you know with experimentation I, I bet you could actually make some decent sounding speakers out of these it would take a lot of experimentation but i think it could be done Since it's a precision port box with a bass reflex, might as well take advantage of it. That's with the bass reflex port, and this one is plugged. I think it sounds better with it open, honestly. Get you in close here by the base. There we go. It's feeling kind of bassy sink.
back with these. Pulling out all the stops. So I spread them out. And they are getting a little more uh, bass reflection off the wall. Are you down and out? And your feet were worried I don't believe Always on the run That's why they call me Bad company I can't Okay, so that's the left, and this will be the right. All right, this is both channels. I'll turn on the subwoofer. Okay, so there's the subwoofer. Ready? Yeah, so that's these little speakers with a subwoofer going. And um, so, yeah, it's something you could listen to. It's not going to sound great, but <laughs> they work. Well, take care and see you next time.